The Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim is a budget-friendly CPU cooler which for many years has been the go-to alternative for the Hyper 212 CPU cooler. However, how this small CPU cooler stands today, among other more modern models, we shall see. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim is available for around 50 US dollars or euros, depending of course on where you get it from and if you can find one in stock. And for this price you get copper made heat pipes, a 135mm fan and an improved mounting system, among other things. We start with the way this cooler looks like, and it is quite good to look at, actually. There's a good contrast between the aluminum in the heatsink and the all black silent wings fan at the front. In addition to that, the copper color of the heat pipes adds more depth and detail to the overall design of the CPU cooler. One big advantage of the Shadow Rock Slim is its reduced dimensions, which offer a good clearance, especially on the RAM side of the motherboard. The Shadow Rock Slim has a single tower heatsink design and has a height of around 160mm, which is not bad at all, especially since it uses a larger than usual fan, but more on that a bit later. The heatsink has more design elements installed, starting at the top with a top plate which not only features a linear brush texture on the aluminum surface, but also has the Be Quiet logo etched into the metal surface itself. This plate is removable to some extent, but you gain nothing by doing so, the height remains the same and you only made the cooler look worse. The heatsink also has around 55 aluminum made cooling fins, but don't quote me on that. These are not only shaped on the sides to provide a place for the fan clips to mount to, but they also have a sort of unique design at the back of the cooler. This is done at the back either to direct the airflow outwards or to allow for an easier access of a screwdriver to the mounting system below the CPU cooler. The cooler has just four copper made heat pipes. These, as is the usual for most air CPU coolers, are arranged in a U shape, not only to facilitate the heat transfer and dissipation, but also to provide a better and more stable base for the cooling fins to sit on. Thankfully, these heat pipes have their endings covered by some metal made caps at the top of the cooler, which follow the overall design of the cooler itself, which is great. Not only are these caps covering the uneven endings of the heat pipes, but it also highlights the higher quality of Be Quiet products, which are present even on this budget oriented CPU cooler. In addition, the heat pipes make direct contact with the base plate of the cooler as they are positioned behind the base plate and have a secondary plate installed over them. Speaking of which, the base plate of the Shadow Rock Slim is made from solid nickel plated copper and has a lovely mirror like finish with subtle radial marks left from the manufacturing process. This base plate also has a good build quality and will not get marks after just one usage with a CPU, a thing which is common among mid range CPU coolers. The fan used on the Shadow Rock Slim is a Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 model, with the now iconic 135mm dimensions. This fan has a maximum speed of 1400 rpm and uses a rifle bearing system. The actual model number of this fan is BQSIW31325MR. PWM. In addition, the fan uses a medium length cable with no sleeving, however the good thing is that the wires and the connector are all black. Speaking of which, the connector used is a standard 4 pin, thus you can control the speed of the fan through PWM. The accessories included with the Shadow Rock Slim are the usual for a cooler of this price range. We get a user manual, a small tube of thermal compound, two extra fan mounting clips, a metallic wrench, two backplates, one for Intel and one for AMD, and the components of the mounting system, which includes nuts, hollowed out bolts, plastic clips, Phillips studs, and two sets of mounting arms, each for one platform. Speaking of the mounting system, the installation of this cooler is fairly easy, however, the best way to describe this mounting system is basically the same as painting something. Everything is down on how much preparation work you are doing. If you do it right, it will look great. If you do it wrong, well, you won't have such an as day ahead of you. We start with the backplate, which in my case is the Intel one. Then you pass through the studs, all the way mind you. Then you get your mounting arms and the nuts and hollowed out screws. You then have to install the hollowed out screws on the correct side of the mounting arms and secure those screws with the help of the nuts that we mentioned before. You also have to tighten them with that nifty metallic wrench that is included. Finally, you attach the mounting arms on the underside of the CPU cooler and right on the sides 
of the base plate. Just secure the arms with the small Phillips screws and you're done. Afterwards you get your back plate with the stud installed and place those on the back of your motherboard with the studs poking out on the other side of the motherboard. Then you secure the studs and dust the back plate with these plastic C-type clamps. Afterwards, you apply the thermal compound on the CPU surface and then place the CPU cooler over the CPU itself. Also, you have to make sure that those hollowed out screws line up with the studs. Afterwards, you need to hold the cooler in place in that position and screw in the studs from behind the motherboard. Don't worry, this part is quite easy. You just need to well tighten those studs right into the hollowed out screws. And you're done. And now you understand why I compared this mounting system with painting a car. It's all about the preparation, and if you do it right, you should have this cooler installed in no less than 5 minutes. If you do it wrong, well, good luck. With the Shadow Rock Slim installed in a standard ATX system, we get to see its main advantage, the size, or lack of it actually. In terms of the clearance, there is plenty to talk about. Actually, there is plenty of clearance, but not really much to talk about, but it's just plenty. Especially around the RAM slots of the motherboard, in fact, the fan of the cooler does not even reach the first RAM slots, let alone interfere with it, which is great. In addition, the graphics card clearance is okay for the most part. In my case, the space between the sides of the CPU cooler and the backplate of the graphics cards is around 22mm. However, the reason why I'm mentioning my case here is that thanks to the placement of a M.2 socket below the CPU socket of a motherboard, the space between the CPU socket itself and expansion slots might be different from one motherboard to the next one, so please keep that in mind. Now that we are done with the cleanse and the cooler is installed, we get to see or rather hear how silent this cooler is or isn't. For this, you will get to hear the cooler with its fan first spinning at its minimum speed available and then accelerating to its maximum rated speed of 1400 RPM. I am doing this because while the decibel reading and measurement is a useful metric in our reviews, it does not take into account the variables that may be present, such as the fan vibrating, the bearing making additional noises, and so on. With the included fan spinning at its maximum speed of 1400 RPM and with the measuring device placed at a distance of 10 cm away from the cooler and system, the Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim reached a maximum noise output of 32 decibels, which makes this cooler the second best cooler in the graph in terms of the noise output. This is thanks to two things. The bigger fan measuring at 135mm can spin slower and achieve the same result in terms of the static pressure and airflow and also the design itself of the impellers of the fan helps out a bit with the noise. And now it's time to see if this CPU cooler can perform as advertised and for that I am using the Intel i9-9900K CPU which is both running at its factory frequency and settings and then it is overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark which places a load on the CPU which is similar with what you may get when playing a modern video game. And in this test, the Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim reached a maximum temperature of 72 degrees Celsius, with an ambiental temperature held steady at 26 degrees Celsius. This places the Shadow Rock Slim 1 degree ahead of the Dark Rock Slim, and you might ask yourself, why is that? Well, because the Shadow Rock Slim has a bigger heatsink and uses a bigger fan overall, so that's your difference. However, this next test will separate the big coolers from the smaller coolers, because this test uses the FPU stability test found within the IDA64 Extreme software. This synthetic benchmark places an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something which you will not encounter in your daily usage unless you do heavy video rendering with the CPU as your main rendering device. And in this test, the Shadow Rock Slim reached a maximum temperature of 92 degrees Celsius, with the same ambiental temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz. And here you can see that with the CPU overclocked, the Shadow Rock Slim and the Dark Rock Slim are in fact running at the same temperature, as the heat that needs to be dissipated is too much for either heatsinks to handle. However, the Shadow Rock Slim still pulls ahead if we look at the temperatures with the CPU running at its factory settings. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim is certainly an impressive little cooler. It is not something I'd recommend using for overclocking, especially overclocking CPUs like the i9-9900K. 
However, the Shadow Rock Slim, much like the Dark Rock Slim, can hold its own, and that while using just a single fan. In terms of the noise output, this cooler is very quiet, again thanks to that single 135mm fan. Also, the build quality is very good and pretty close to the quality of the high-end models such as the Dark Rock Pro 4 or the Dark Rock TF. The installation of this cooler is easy if you either have done this before or if you pay attention to the user manual. However, it could have been easier or at least less complicated and could have had just a lower number of components. Components. The price of this cooler is a hit or miss, so far I've seen it go for around 50 US dollars or euros, which is okay for the most part, however this price, even if it might be an issue for some, has some justification, and a good one. The clearance for the RAM memory, which is great, in fact this cooler does not even interfere with the RAM modules of the motherboard at all, and for that alone I'd say that this is worth the asked price, let alone the fact that this cooler is very quiet. If you like this review, then you may consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below you can find both the links for the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.